Oh my God, that looks like an alien spaceship. Today, we're opening up this G-Shock imposter from AliExpress that you guys voted for in our Watch of the Week community poll. And this thing literally cost me just 12 Australian dollars. So let's find out if this thing is great value or a scam. <laughs> I'm going in completely blind here. So let's open this thing up. And thanks again to JMEC for the idea to do an AliExpress watch. 1583. Now, hang on a minute. The 1628. Yes, it is. This might be the wrong instructions. Check this out. Look at how soft this strap is. I have never held a G-Shock with a strap as soft as this. And it might be because it's cheaper quality plastic. I don't know. But one thing's for sure. This thing looks like it's going to be very comfortable. Just like a G-Shock, we have a little tag here with the brand name, Skme. I think that's how you pronounce it. Let me know if not. We've also got a branded sticker on the case back to indicate that it's passed its quality check and a mysterious QR code, which I'm not quite game to scan, but if one of you guys wants to risk getting a virus, feel free to pause the video and let us know how it goes. Thank you for your sacrifice. Satisfying. Taking a look at the case back, I'm noticing that the etching does look a little bit shallow compared to a G-Shock, which I do have on hand, my DW6900, one of our recent Watch of the Weeks, if you want to check out that video. And you'll notice that the engraving on this one is just a little bit deeper. And you'll also notice the water resistance rating is only 5 atm or 50 meters here, which is more than enough for having showers and etc. But a normal G-Shock, you're looking at 20 bar or 200 meters. Also worth noting is that there's the identical strap and spring bar structure of a normal G-Shock, which makes me wonder if there's actually compatibility between any of the straps. So that's something we might explore in the one week check-in of this watch, so make sure you're subscribed. Over to the front, and this is where things start to get really blatant, that this is a G-Shock ripoff. So straight away, we have the water resist text down the bottom. We don't have G-Shock written up here, but Sport Watch. And then we have the brand name written on the lens here. And it also looks like there's a screen protector. So let's peel that off now as well, if we can. Ah, satisfaction. Now I have a G-Shock square on hand for us to do a bit of comparisons with. But first, let's take a closer look what we've got here. Luminescent backlight, a countdown timer, dual time, one 100 chronograph, and as we noted on the back, 50 meters of water resistance. So let's compare it to this G-Shock Square. And by the way, this gorgeous 5610 was one of our most popular modding videos, so make sure you check it out if you missed it. But let's start with the similarities. So there's clearly been some inspiration taken in the bezel shape of the SME, which is almost identical in size and shape to the legitimate G-Shock. And then even the surrounding of the lens, having the way the text is laid out, is really quite similar to the G-Shock as well. Even the screen itself has the text and little square laid out in the same position as the G-Shock. So now let's talk about the differences. Notice how the digits and text on the SME just become a little bit blurry when you look at it from a different angle. And uh, it's just not that much contrast either. See how it kind of inverts at that angle there? Whereas with a legitimate G-Shock, you just don't really get that. And the next thing I noticed is that the light button is actually in a completely different spot on the top left, whereas it's on the top right on most G-Shocks. Make sure you ram that like button and let's get this bad boy on my wrist and actually start pressing some of these buttons. Let's start by removing our AE1200, which I've been enjoying wearing today and another fantastic Watch of the Week episode. Not bad at all. I could probably go one looser actually, but uh, yeah, the material itself feels really, really soft as we kind of guessed. Uh, but yeah, in terms of size, um, you know, as we've identified, same size as a normal G-Shock Square, so um, doesn't look too bad on my 6.75 inch wrist. So this thing's been stuck on a 12 o'clock alarm since we got it. So let's press our first button and see what happens. Whoa, okay. What have we got? Alarm, daily time, timer, stopwatch, 
and the date. Awesome. And that's another difference actually between the pusher sizes. Look at how small and hard to press a normal G-Shock Square's buttons are compared to these nice big pushes on the SME. It's actually made pressing them a lot easier than the legitimate G-Shock. Now we're of course going to be testing all of these functionalities over the next one week, but one thing that we have to test right now is the stopwatch as is tradition. I'm going to start this up and I'm going to try and stop this on exactly 10 seconds and if we do, you have to ram that like button. So here we go. 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, okay, that's, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Like the video. Now it's time to test the backlight. So let's see how we go. Oh my God, that looks like an alien spaceship. That is so cool. We'll shut the lights off and have a look at the SME. Wow, that is super bright and really cool looking. So now let's compare that to the 5610. Nowhere near as bright, but a very even light on that one. So let me know in the comments, guys, which backlight do you prefer? So what are my overall thoughts on the SME 1628? I'm not going to hesitate to say I am so impressed with this thing, especially for the 12 Australian dollar price point. I'm going to leave a link to the exact listing I got this from at a discount if you want to get your hands on one. And I cannot wait to be wearing this for the next one week to provide you with my in-depth review for Watch of the Week. Make sure you are a subscriber so you don't miss out when it goes live. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this G-Shock imposter. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Here's a link to our Watch of the Week playlist and a video that you should watch next. A massive shout out to our Goat Crew channel members. And if you want to join us, here's the link. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next review.